Hello, I suck sticks, heart cinema fans, friends and acquaintances. Episode number one three, the big one three, means you are of legal age to have sex in the country of Spain. Yes, Spain, Mexico too, I believe. Mexico might be 12, actually. Mexico, Legit. there might not be any rules about anything. Yeah. You can drink when you're born. You can bang horses and donkeys. It's inv- both the things you have mentioned are not only permitted, but encouraged. Yeah, oh, from birth, encouraged. Yeah. Uh, you are You are demanded by law to sell drugs. Yeah, it's you know you know how some countries like uh, uh, some East Asian uh, countries like Korea and uh, Vietnam still might um, Israel does like you have to do a couple of year you're required by law to do a couple of years of military service in Mexico you're required by law to do three years as a drug lord <laughs> a drug lord yes or or drug mule or mule drug mule yeah you must put balloons of cocaine up your bottom and go into Texas. Yeah. Yeah, there's so much. Now, drug mule drug mule in Mexico I feel is a difficult position because there's so much cuz horses and donkeys are getting fucked so much. I feel like a drug mule could be mistaken. Someone might just fuck you by accident. That, one day. You very possible. Some drug addicted girl in a bar <laughs> is going to mistake you for a donkey, yeah. a real donkey and yeah. uh, have sex with you. Yeah, so that's that's a rough life. Also, I think drug mules give regular mules a bad name. <laughs> well, gonna, must yeah. be tough to be a regular mule. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, first of all, you're already known as an ass or a jackass, so it's that's like, tough. If when you're described as a mule, what do people in, immediately jump to? Drug mule. But you know what? It's not often the case, and I think we need to stop judging. Well, that's Scott's take on animal rights. That's that's, that's my political statement. You know how I like to get political on the show. Do I like to get political on you're the show? You're all about politics. You're all about, you're all about fighting for the man, or in this case, the donkey. Yes. Yes. <laughs> donkey, horse, horse's cousin. Miniature horse? Shetland. They're not even, I don't even think they're in the same genus pool, are they? They're, I think they're probably the same genus. They're certainly not the same species. They're both in the hoofed mammal department <laughs> along with cows i swear to god i thought you were gonna say cats and then i was gonna have to give you like a, a very rudimentary biology lesson <laughs> yes cats, you know like cats <laughs> cats clearly have hooves <laughs> i was gonna say cows minotaurs yes centaurs let us not forget all of the tars your minnows your scent your scents <laughs> scents yeah my my high school mascot the centaur Seriously? Centennial Centaurs. Awesome. Yeah, but... Did they, you have an actual Centaur they didn't, as a mascot? They didn't introduce the mascots until after I graduated, but then they actually uh, legitimately hired a real Centaur to be our mascot. He also <laughs> doubled as the music teacher. The music teacher was a Centaur. Well, he had extra limbs so he could do, <laughs> you know, more drums at once. Oh, he could once. conduct like a mascot. On his, on his hind legs. <laughs> oh, so he'd rear, and dr- rear up on the hind. So drums now, with the front. So now he's got four free. Drums with the front and conduct with the hands. This is amazing. The, the, it's times like this I wish it was a video podcast because Drew's visual illustration of how that worked was goddamn amazing. I'm fairly certain that most people, when they listen to this, will be able to deduct their own... <laughs> Uh, mental image of a centaur playing drums with its front hooves and conducting an orchestra with its hands. Or, drums with the front, triangle with the hands. Sure. Oh, it's a percussion machine. Or, maraca and, uh, what's the circle with all the jingles in it? Tambourine. Yeah, tambourine. (laughs) Okay, I wouldn't have got that from that description. Okay. (laughs) Well, it's a circle with jingly okay. things in it. I, I know what a tambourine is, but from that description, we would have been here for the rest of time, me guessing what that instrument is, by a circle with the jingles in it. Well, <laughs> I would have been racking my brain. It's a good thing that there's only eight days left in the world, so... Oh, yeah. Eight days of thinking about tambourine wouldn't have been that bad. No, it, yeah, it would have only been the eight days. So End of the world, okay. people. I don't know how you're not prepared yet. Oh, man, it's episode 13. We're recording on December 13th. It's pretty exciting, right? Or not? Am I wrong? <laughs> Thir- 13, 13, 12? 
13, 13. I hope that doesn't work yeah. at all. S- smarch 13th. Smarch 13th. Lousy, Got lousy smarch Lousy weather. smarch weather. I mean, it was. It is pretty cool that if you think about it, because 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, that will never happen again until we reach, what, the year 3001? Probably 3012. Well, no, but I mean, then you'll have 1, 1... One oh, uh, they're, re- they're repeating. There will never be a repeating thing yeah, you, until um, the year 3001, correct? Uh, well... I mean, it, unless it, you're going to go... Because if you go, go 2101, 20, but then yeah. you're going 2101, right? Yeah. I don't know. It, depending on how you want to look at it, it's either 100 years or 1,000 years. I guess. So, you'll be long dead. I'll be here for it. Well, how many lives do you have left? Like seven. I don't know if that's... Accurate. <laughs> I, <laughs> I can count solely off the top of my head from things you've been present for. Four times that you've died in my presence. Four you've been present for. Yeah. There was one time where Kevin tried to give you a sunset flip and you broke your ankle. Oh my god. That counts as one. That was horrific. <laughs> that was a very horrific. My ankles like flashed before its I'm eyes. I'm fairly certain that your final VCW match with Chewy, both of you died. Yeah. Both both hearts legally stopped for a minute. Wait, how does a, what, what the fuck am I saying? How does a heart illegally stop? What the? Well, heart, your heart will legally stop you, if it's we a were, drug. We meal. were legally dead, is what I was trying to say. Your heart doesn't legally stop. What a stupid <laughs> fucking term. Um, oh man. So what else is up? <laughs> oh yeah, I. End of the world creeps up on you fast. Yeah. I mean, I've only lived through, what, three end of the worlds? Probably four. What do we got? Y2K. Which happened. 9-11. 9-11. Which didn't happen. Which didn't happen. <laughs> and then the one last year where that crazy... Just that fucking guy. Where that crazy old guy was like, oh, yeah, I got the calculations down to the second. Yeah. And then, three, two, one. Oh, I didn't care. Oh, you two. know what? I forgot. Oh, my oh. math. Oh, I gotta redo it again. Yeah. I, I, oh, I'm sorry, everybody. Next year, I promise we'll all be dead. <laughs> I love the fact, though, that... Uh, That's Park- a good promise. I would like to make that promise. <laughs> I love the, the fact that Parks and Rec did an episode about that. Yes. That was pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> Where they just get together because they want to just hang out, <laughs> but they use it as, like, a doomsday call yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> And they have to, they rent out park time for it. <laughs> That's... So, yeah, so we're recording this on the 13th. This will put it up, I don't know, probably in the December late teens. This is, so is this also our, uh, is it the 14th? My watch is wrong, guys. I'm sorry. We're going to have to start this all over again. It is December 14th. You're going to have to disregard everything I've said up to this point. I... Have written the date at work today no less than five times. Every time I wrote December thirteenth, <laughs> um, I feel like I voided at least two contracts by doing this. Uh, so we'll see how that plays out. I'll, I'll update you on that next show when Scott doesn't have a job anymore. When I don't have a job, but I'll have more time to record this. So good, more fun for you guys, less for me. Um, what was his thing? Oh yeah. Uh, so yeah, does this double as our holiday episode too, or is there gonna be a, a we might have time to squeeze another holiday. one? We got in there. We got eleven days to do a Christmas one. Yeah. All right. You are wearing a nice sweater though. I so. am wearing a nice sweater. I have dressed up nicely for this. I, I because be, before I because I've had the sweater on all day, but before I had a uh, collared shirt under the sweater, and I'm, it's a like it's a really fucking preppy. Uh, cr- like cream colored Tommy Hilfiger sweater, and I had like a similar, similarly preppy collared shirt underneath. And at work today, I was told by more than one person separately that I looked like I should be at a whites only country club, <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> which I don't know what that says. I don't know what that says about them. I don't know what that says about me. <laughs> nope. Well, they clearly. Are very familiar with you and your and your background. <laughs> they <so> know me. <laughs> they know you very well. Yeah. So yeah, they're they're not wrong, but I was still surprised they said it. So we haven't talked about body hair yet. <laughs> no, we have not. But there's still time. I was just looking at the time, and we're nearing ten minutes, and we haven't done our uh, we haven't done our standard when we uh, 
We just recorded me and you. Did we introduce ourselves? Did we say we're Scott and Drew? I don't know that we need to because if anybody's listened to this before... We should be able to work it I'm out. I'm pretty sure that they should realize that there's only two people that are on every episode. Yeah. But I will say, despite my efforts to get Do you kicked me? off the podcast... Yeah. Yeah, for those who saw, Drew made a, a Facebook post asking for, like, feedback on what to do with these. Like, what do you do? Like, like, more games, more movie reviews, more structure, less structure, less Scott Henson, one of the options. Well, Scott, what? You, you do talk a lot. What's that? A lot. I talk enough. Mm, more than your share. I talk more than other people, but that's not more than my share. <laughs> you talk more than Kelly, because Kelly says five words on a podcast. Kelly has a case of the mumbles. <laughs> Kelly has a case of the mumbles, and he also has a case of he's tired and, and cranky because he just came from work. Yeah. That's the only time Kelly does podcasts with us. That's because that's the only time... K- Kelly's Kelly's existence is either at work, just home from work, or asleep. <laughs> so he do, He does only have three things in his life. Maybe four. He has Jim. He has Jim. Who's Jim? You know, the guy. <laughs> the the muscle guy. You know, the one that helps him lift things. <laughs> He's got his own personal man boy <laughs> man slave boy. servant thing. His name's Jim. He's handsome. <laughs> and spelled G Y M. <laughs> yeah, spelled G Y M. What the hell is a gime? Oh, oh a, a gime. gime. <laughs> so Scott what's up we watched a movie tonight we did watch a movie tonight a movie that won award winning movie it, it won it won awards numerous it won, it won, uh, it won a picture re- actor actress screenplay screenplay what S- else supporting director I'm a good assume director sure we uh, haven't done the homework but close enough uh, best use of a uh, talking animal best kiss Best kiss. Wait, did I make that up or am I right? I hope it happened. No, it didn't. No, why? why we're, we're... We were talking about it happening. <laughs> oh yeah, I think we are just talking about it. <laughs> Probably, I'm going to say, guess a uh, movie featuring the most cameos. There oh. was a lot. A lot of oh. random ass cameos. Cameos from like varying degrees of celebrity and success. One, in fact, so much that it made me so mad that the integrity of the person for being in the film... You were pretty mad. Maybe we should uh, reveal what film this was. It would be the 2011 Razzie winner for every Razzie they nominate. Jack and Jill. Starring Adam Sandler and... uh, Who was the female lead? Oh, the female lead. Her name is... Uh, um, She's been in a couple things... Uh, we just watched it. Pull up IMDb. I will pull up IMDb. Oh, no! Adam Sandler. Oh, Adam Sandler. Right. Adam Sandler as Jack, Adam Sandler as Jill. <sighs> and you know what? Not actually the most infuriating part of the movie. You know what? Like I said before, this movie, I was so disappointed at how not... Furious I yeah, was at it. You weren't it. as mad as you were expecting to be. The, uh, like, no joke, You Don't Mess With The Zohan was, was a million times yeah, worse than this it was, movie. Yeah, it was, I was way more aggravated that You Don't Mess With The Zohan, which was, like, it, it was almost too bad because I've been actually wanting to see this for a while because I saw Bucky Larson, Born To Be A Star, the uh, the Nick Swardson vehicle, who was also in this, because Nick wanted, as I was saying to Drew, Nick wanted to hedge his Razzie bets just to make sure he was in the winner. Well, that, and let's not forget, he is an asshole Adam Sandler friend. Yes, of which there are many. Uh, and Bucky Larson was so, like, awesomely bad. Just, like, unacceptable on so many levels, but entertaining for it. And then I saw that Jack and Jill beat Bucky Larson for all the Razzies. I'm like, oh... Jack and Jill has to be bonkers then. And uh, gotta say, Bucky Larson was was worse. I unfortunately was uh, neglected of seeing Bucky Larson because I probably had something better to do that evening like... Kill yourself. Like jerk off for the fifth time (laughs) or something. Uh, But I can only imagine, like... I I was honestly going into this expecting that we would watch 15 to 20 minutes and then fast forward. Throw something at the TV... 
Yes. Shut it off. Much like Gili, where we fast-forwarded through the last 40 minutes. Couldn't do it. But, to be fair, Gili, it was so long. Two hours. So long. Yeah. And this I, one's I said, not two hours. Yeah, Jack and Joel, it was pretty, digest lengthwise, pretty digestible, because they were at least wise enough to barely make it long enough to be considered a feature film. I think it was like 85 minutes. But, uh... Yeah, like, d don't get us wrong. It's a bad movie. <laughs> it's Adam Sandler playing himself and his sister. So, you know, that gives you a pretty good idea of what you're in the, for. The way I look at it is, if this movie was made in the 90s and was featuring a female actor playing uh, Jill... It would just be a movie. It would just be a run-of-the-mill yeah. movie. Like... Nobody would look at it and say that is a fucking horrible movie. No, it would just It be probably a... wouldn't have even been nominated for Razzies. No. Because it would have be just movie. Yeah, it would have just been a run of the mill comedy. Yeah. But because Adam Sandler, uh fat Adam Sandler playing his sister wearing a fat a fatter suit. suit. <laughs> that is the reason why it is was yeah. nominated for every Razzie and won every Razzie. It wasn't like Norbit Medea fat suit though. It was just like chunky. Yes. It was just big old boobies and a bottom yeah. and like a, some hips. Like, he was, to be fair, he was basically going for every 40-year-old Jewish woman, and I, he got it about right. <laughs> whoa, 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 Hey. Adam Sandler's Jewish? Oh, yeah, you never heard? I, oh, I've never, that? I've never been told. I, I was saying to Drew, there are two groups of people that you will know they are in that group of people within 30 seconds of talking to them. Jewish people and non-drinkers. And if you think about it for a minute, you know I'm right. <laughs> we know some non-drinkers. We do. Dose. Who's Dose? Daniel. Does he, does he know Jim? <laughs> Daniel. And Kelleth. Yeah. Although, Kelly has drank You're telling me Dan has never drank in his entire life? I think he m might have tasted it once in his young youth, as opposed to his older youth. When he was impressionable? And somebody told him that everybody was doing it? No, I think, like, an adult gave him, like, a taste of wine or something, I yeah. think is... This wasn't and, like... And by an adult, I mean a guy on the street. <laughs> <laughs> with a windowless van. Some old man with a van. <laughs> hey, kid, want to try my homemade wine? <laughs> Just close your eyes and suck it out of this straw. <laughs> Ugh. Gross. I, so, the thing with the movie is that what didn't make me the most mad... Or, sorry, what I thought would make me the most mad <laughs> didn't. didn't make me the most mad. Yeah. Adam Sandler as Jill didn't actually infuriate me as much as other things in the movie. Yeah. Uh, Which I guess speaks for the infuriating nature of the other things in the movie. For um, for Jill, he if you've heard his, I guess his first album, uh, he's doing, like, the mother voice he does on his um, on his albums. The, the voice from... Uh, the uh, they're all gonna laugh at you sketch and the uh, and the the do it for Ma do it for mama play with you cock and balls sketch is uh, is the voice that he does for the whole movie and I never thought when I was listening to that album in 1995 that uh, I'm like hey this voice is good enough for a whole movie <laughs> yes that I, I will say that that did annoy me but that wasn't Not the, the worst. most annoying part Not like, the worst. Number one off the top of my head, things that annoyed me were the actress and and uh, actor playing his kids. Kids suck. Were both fucking kids annoying. Kids suck. Uh, just ridiculous. And I, you know what, I, I'll, I'll read to you the, um, this is how the cast list goes. So, Adam Sandler as Jack Saddlestein and Jill Saddlestein. Second build, Al Pacino as himself. Yep. And the man who has done some of the most rem memorable films uh, of some people's generations, not yeah. mine, because I've never seen The Godfather and I don't want to see Scarface. Yeah. Um, let, let's just say one of the most interesting uh, career paths that this man has probably ever taken, yeah. considering the entire concept of the role was that he is a senile old man <laughs> who falls in love with Jill. Yeah. Um, I thought that... Uh, well, Scott had a good line about it, um, about, how he, about his acting in the film. Oh, <laughs> his... Uh, yeah, Al Pacino's wig did more acting than him in the movie. <laughs> 
Yes. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen Al Pacino in recent times, the man is in his 70s, and his hair looks like he is 50. He enjoys a good. He enjoys good peace. He definitely enjoys good peace. I, I don't yeah. know why he's got more integrity to, uh, uh, like, n- wear a hairpiece and cover up being a bald old man, but he's not too good to be in Jack and Jill. <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting... Oh, this is unprofessional. Fucking phone's hey, ringing. It you plays heard... into the movie! <laughs> Who, uh... Why does it only ring once? Oh, and that's, uh... That's it. What, uh... What's it? Why? Why are you? Why? Why are you making a face at me? Cause you're answering your phone and it plays into the movie. Oh my god! Unbelievable. Now do I have to go on a rant? Perfect. Did you? No, you didn't. You. Oh, you did send me a Facebook message that says you, <laughs> that has a racial expletive in it. That was from like ten minutes ago. That's yeah. That's the. If you heard a ding right when we started recording. Oh, is it? Is your front door locked? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm going to go deal with that. You well, keep talking. Okay, so Al Pacino is portraying, um, you know, classic um, um, stage performances. He's doing the Macbeth. No, he's not doing Macbeth. He's doing uh, Don Quixote, and he's doing... I don't remember what the other one was. Anyways, as he's on stage performing... Um, Adam Sandler is watching a YouTube clip of it because Adam Sandler is a marketing executive who's trying to get um, the uh, sorry the Dunkin' Donuts company wants Al Pacino in their uh, commercial because their new thing is called the Dunkachino and it rhymes with Al Pacino. Yeah, I know. So they want Al Pacino in their commercial, so he's got to try and convince him to come. So he's watching a YouTube clip of Al Pacino performing on stage, and somebody's cell phone goes off. So he stops mid-performance mid, uh, to scream at the person in the audience, then forgets where he is or how he got there, thanks the audience for coming, and walks off stage. Then later, when he's already in love with Jill, he decides, uh, or he's on stage again performing, and he hears a cell phone go off, and it's his cell phone. And so he stops mid-performance to answer his cell phone and talk to Jill, um, although it's actually Jack pretending to be Jill, and he (laughs) and he goes into like a Godfather esque like rant on the phone in front of the crowd. Well, Kelly, you didn't watch Jack and Jill. Kelly's here. By the way, nice jacket. By the way, that's what I said. Is that new? new. Kelly's wearing a uh, leather jacket. And a blind guardian shirt. Kelly's in his badass face. <laughs> He's in his badass face. Uh, Kelly could be on uh, Sons of Anarchy. <laughs> um, yes, so... Uh, Kelly's also grown a full beard since I saw him like, last week. <laughs> um, now, portraying Adam Sandler's wife is Katie Holmes. And I had said to Scott... Sucks! Being in this movie was the second worst decision Katie Holmes has ever done with her with her life. And I said, no, you said second best. <laughs> no, I said second worst. Oh, second, okay. Maybe second worst. I don't know. But regardless, I'd say either, whichever way you're going, uh, getting yourself kicked out of the Christopher Nolan Batman franchise was also a great decision. I was more leaning towards marrying Tom Cruise. Yeah, I know. But you took it the other way. Just I know. When you say guys, I'm explaining your joke so it's not funny anymore. Oh, good. I, I love overanalyzing a joke. Only one of us can be funny. Which, well, I guess we've established who that is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Justin. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. So, I there was people in this movie that I enjoyed. I enjoy Tim Meadows. I enjoy Norm Macdonald. Even I though enjoy, they both had small roles. I enjoy Captain Matthews from Dexter. Uh, Jeff Pearson. Uh, red-headed school teacher from National Lampoon's Senior Trip. Valerie Mahaffey. Valerie Bertinelli mm, is another person named Valerie, that's but true. not in this movie. Uh, you know who I don't enjoy? Dana Carvey. Very nope. small role in this movie. Did not enjoy him. How about David Spade in Weird uh, Drag? David Spade... Played a girl that they went to high school with. They played pay, played a mean girl who is now forty. Yeah, but she looked like she was a cross dressing tranny. Yeah, 
huge tits. But like huge butt. Huge, like stupid fake looking. Like like yes. the worst looking fake titties. Absurd. Absurd. <laughs> Worse than in Piranha 3D? D? Oh, but those were uh, that was girls. Those with were on breasts. a girl. These were on this was like spade. like a suit, but they looked like boobs. Yeah. Like it was so dumb. It was a girl suit. <laughs> and um, on top of that, there was also every single one of Adam Sandler's asshole friends within this one. Yeah, not just one, not just two, so, but okay. all ten of them. Some reprising roles from other Adam Sandler yes. movies. Yes. Uh, what's uh, Al- Alan Covert? Is, is the one who's home. from Grandma's Boy. Okay. And he essentially reprised the role of the homeless... His, of uh, Happy Gilmore's homeless caddy. Yeah. Like, he was homeless again. I don't... Uh, what was his name in Happy Gilmore? Uh... Otto! It Otto. was the same name! Oh, so it was the it same was guy! It was the same character! I take everything back, that's awesome. Okay, I that... thought they were just getting lazy, but if it's legit the same character... That's fucking amazing. That is pretty goddamn awesome. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, else? We had that dumb tan guy who's always a jerk off. He was one of the mean people with David Spade. And so was uh, Lazy Eye. Yeah, Lazy Eyed football player from Waterboy and other stuff. Uh, yeah, and then David Spade. David Spade. And uh, was the giant in it. I wish the giant was in it. <laughs> uh, Rob Schneider had an uncredited role, but oh, then, but then I didn't, but then I didn't actually. See, yeah, he was just a voice. Yeah, he, we didn't but he see was him. in it. Oh, but they, they made a oh. joke about him. <laughs> so good, so good. All right, so Jill comes back to uh, the Bronx from yeah. visiting her brother in Los Angeles, and she goes to the bar, and that's where the, he, she sees all of the people from high school who are mean to her. And she says, like, oh, you know, I just was so busy being on game shows and dating celebrities. And David Spade says, oh, who did you date? Rob, Rob Schneider. Schneider. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was pretty goddamn funny. <laughs> um, but, yes, yeah, so uh, I, we mentioned Al Pacino. Not the only cameo in this movie. Not the only A-list cameo. Not the only movie. A-list cameo. Uh, I would say the number one A-list cameo in the movie was a man whose integrity has now been compromised by me, <laughs> for from me, and that is Johnny Depp. One John really? Depp. Playing himself. As himself. Why would he agree to do this? Don't know. Number hey. one, he is in some of the... Look, old Kelly, big... if you're going to talk, you're going to have to get closer than three rooms away from the phone. <laughs> he is in some of the biggest movies in Hollywood, and he also agrees to be in this piece of shit. Yeah, and he served no purpose. No, like, he didn't need to he, be there. He had like he was on camera. They were at a Lakers he was game. Sitting, he was sitting with Al Pacino, and he for was a bit. sitting courtside. Yeah. next to Al Pacino, who was wearing a beard, sitting, a fake beard. Sitting courtside, Knicks and Nets give me high fives, and they got to be spiked out. I could trip a referee. Talk about my attitude that I'm most definitely from New York. I can't believe you said the N word on here. Jay Z. Only because Alicia I Keys. usually say it. Empire, state of mind. You stole my bit. <laughs> you you were you were also going to do Empire State of Mind? No, I was just going to say the N-word. Oh, you should have said the N-word. Okay, that's more your bet. I'm like, I don't know Drew's way into Jay-Z lyrics. Yes. Well, some of the other cameos in this. Uh, so The A-list ends now. Well, yeah, and the A-list ends now. Jill goes on uh, The Price is Right, so obviously Drew Carey. Who I always forget doesn't look like a human being anymore. Yes. Uh, they go to a birthday party for... Jack, but also for Jill, because they are obviously twins. Uh, and there is a whole bunch of celebrities, uh, including... I'll, I'll go with the, the higher-ranked celebrities on this list. Um, can I name my highest-ranked first? You can rank, You can name your number one. Vince Offer. <laughs> That's right, the ShamWow guy. The... Playing himself. The hooker-punching ShamWow guy. Or the shticky guy. Yes. Uh... Followed closely by uh, Michael Irvin and Bill Romanowski, former yep. uh, NFL players. Uh, you have uh, Bruce Jenner p- portraying himself Bruce, as Bruce Jenner's face. <laughs> Bruce Jenner's face. He doesn't have any lines. Yeah. Um, there is also. He was great. Bruce Jenner looked like he was going to say something at the end of a scene, and then it cut. Yeah, it cut. <laughs> it was awesome. Um, then there was a commercial starring Shaq, who was dressed. Oh, okay. As- <laughs> Legit funny, that commercial. Yes, so good. It was Shaq, it was Shaq selling hams. <laughs> he was selling hams while wearing a wig that made him look like Al Sharpton. 
<laughs> and he was saying, what, "What? What was his line?" I only had the four. He's like, "I was like these these uh, these hams are no good are so good. I know good hams. I give this ham four rings, and then starts like licking, licking the ham. The ham. <laughs> it was fucking insane. Um, then he's also filming a commercial at the beginning of the movie for Pepto Bismol, starring Regis, Regis Philbin. Yeah. Um, and then the number one cameo in this movie that stole it from from me was John McEnroe. In his second Adam Sandler movie. John McEnroe threatening Nick Swardson was hilarious. Yes, because Nick Swardson was an atheist. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so, a lot of people made some uh, very interesting career choices. Maybe they owed Sandler a favor. Must have. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, definitely some interesting decisions. Yeah. Just walking into this room, I've heard nothing but good things about this movie. Kelly, you, you missed it earlier. No joke, this movie was better than You Don't Mess With the Zohan. Yeah. Zohan was definitely worse. Like, uh, I did not hate this movie as much as I wish I had. Yeah. Like, I'm disappointed in myself that I do not hate this movie as much this as I w- should This would not have kept you on the floor as much as Bucky Larson did. Ugh. Bucky Larson would definitely trumpet in floor time. So, Scott, for yeah. the uh, for the dumb people in our audience... All of them? Yeah. Uh, when you're... Twins. Look at those people down there. They look like ants. They are <laughs> ants. <laughs> when when you're twins, yeah, and uh, and you're a brother and a sister, oh. you uh, you look exactly the same, right? That's how it works. If in in science, twins are different genders. They don't look the same. They don't look any more the same than a regular brother and sister. That is the point of fraternal twins, not identical twins. Because guess what? A male and a female can't be identical. And you, but, uh, what is your example? Phil and Lil from Rugrats. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's that rephrase is that. a good kind of Let's point. rephrase that then. Animated twins can look exactly the same. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I reference this twins. because uh, in the movie, when Tim Meadows' character finds out that Adam Sandler has a twin sister, asks if and he identical. asks, are they fraternal or are they... It's the identical. Identical. Yeah. And Nick Swardson says some stupid joke. He says, it. oh, yeah, he says... Nocturnal. Nocturnal yes, like nocturnal a bat. Nocturnal like a, a bat. bat. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> so, yeah. Like, Which, why, now that I say it out loud, is a funny joke. You know what? It's actually <laughs> on the IMDb page, under quotes, that is the quote that it has. Very good. What's this about a twin? Oh, Jack, he has a twin sister. Are you kidding me? He, you never told me you have a twin sister. No, I mean she's identical or fraternal? Nocturnal, like a bat. <laughs> um, Scott. Drew. I want to play a quick little trivia here with you. I like games. What uh, What do you think the budget of this film was? The budget of this film, well, well, let me see. We had to... 30 million. Pay a bunch of stupid people. <laughs> we had to... Celebrity cameos. Celebrity cameras. You also had to do the CGI of cut it, splicing the two of them into the same scene. Oh, yeah, there was a lot of that. Mm. 30 million is not a horrible guess. I'm going to say a little higher, though, actually. I'm going to say 45. Scott, would it surprise you if I told you this movie's budget was $79 million? Oh, my God! That is how much this movie costs to make. I can only assume that is Sandler paying himself two salaries. And why shouldn't he? Absolutely. He did if you're the making work. the movie, you pay yourself whatever you want. Michael Keaton got six billion dollars for multiplicity. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's yeah. a, that's a lot per Keaton. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, it's probably the funniest thing I've ever seen. How much do you think? If five yeah. Keatons for a quarter. <laughs> how much do you think that this movie made on opening weekend? Oh, less than seventy nine million. I'm going to say uh, 10. Kelly, opening weekend? I don't know. There's a lot of... There's a lot of... Uh... Sandler fags? Yeah. I feel like they're dwindling, though. He's losing a lot of goodwill with movie after movie. He definitely peaked. In 1996. I think a lot of people saw The Longest Yard. I saw The Longest Yard. Yeah, I saw, we saw The Longest Yard on opening weekend. Good. Only because we there was wrestlers in it. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I want to say people were dumb enough to go see it, and it matched. You think it Was made it 79, 79 in the opening weekend? Oh, opening weekend. Opening weekend, yeah. Sorry, I don't weekend. think it made the 79 overall, let alone opening weekend. Uh, I don't 
I'll say... I still think people went s- were dumb enough to go see it, so I'll say 25. What do we got? Kelly Summers on the nose. Wow! Just like slightly over twenty five thousand or twenty five million in the first uh, opening weekend. I, I would believe slightly over twenty five thousand. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sorry, sorry twenty five million, just over twenty five million. Huh. Uh, what did it, did it make its what, money back? What do you think its final it gross ended was? Up at, if uh, twenty six opening, uh, it probably came close to seventy nine, like sixty five. Yeah. Okay. Do you around sixty five? Uh, just over seventy four million. Huh. So it almost made its money back, but didn't, and they did lose, and someone lost. Five I'm sure million. DVD sales and yeah, yeah, rentals, yeah, it's yeah, made. Yeah. Its no, money yeah, if, back. if it's an if international it's, market, if it's that close in the theater, then they made money. But uh, yeah, it's upsetting. One of you obviously bought it and watched it, so uh, Scott actually burnt a copy of it. Downloaded, would not. No, no pirate. Money, no money was exchanged for this movie. <laughs> Uh, one of the, uh, one of the message board comments is, why the hell would Al Pacino do this movie? Fair. Hey. Christopher Plummer. Yeah. Garbage pays the bills. Garbage pays the bills. Garbage pays the bills. Yeah. So, I'm I'm just very disheartened that, uh, I did not hate it as much as I wanted to. Uh, Yeah. Again, not saying it was good. It was a bad movie. But... Oh but he and uh, and also on top of that too, uh, the guy who directed it is his asshole friend who directs all of his movies. Yeah, that, Dennis Dugan, the Happy Madison director, yeah. who does all that yeah. awful shit. Now, but yeah, of the of the Razzie nominees I saw for twenty eleven, this one didn't deserve it. Do you think before the end of the world happens in eight days that we're gonna have seven a ch- days that we're gonna have a seven chance days. to see that's my boy? <laughs> because that one might be the one that uh, I feel like I gotta space out my Stanley movies. I, I don't back to back weeks. I don't know if that's wise. Like I think like I have to. I feel like I have to ask my doctor if I can do that. Well, you better uh, better hurry up and ask him because we don't have a lot of days left before the end of the world. I guess not. Uh, yeah, I, I'm gonna need some time before that's my point. Because <laughs> it hasn't been that long since you don't mess with the Zohan and and now this and then yeah. I don't, yeah, I, I think just for health reasons, that's not a great idea. We may have to wait till after the end of the world <laughs> to see That's My Boy. Which I think is an appropriate time to see That's My Boy. I guess. After the apocalypse. <laughs> after the world comes to a screeching halt. We'll wait for it to stop raining fire. And then we'll watch That's My Boy. I'm just looking up the uh, Razzy stuff here. stuff? Pacino won for supporting supporting actor. David Spade won for supporting actress, even though he was in it for all of four minutes. Yeah. Although Katie Holmes was also nominated. Good. Worst screen couple was Adam Sandler with either Katie Holmes, Al Pacino, or or himself. Good stuff. Uh, worst director, worst screenplay, worst screen ensemble. <laughs> Although hey. Also nominated for worst on screen, uh, worst screen ensemble was the cast of Bucky Larson. Yep. Fuck. And then yep. yeah, actress, actor, and uh, picture. Well, I've seen two of the five worst pictures from last year, so, and I won't see the other three. So, so Bu- Bucky Larson. Yeah. New Year's Eve. Didn't see. Transformers three. Didn't see. And Twilight. Uh... Uh, Breaking Dawn Part 1. Didn't see. Oh, do you guys want spoilers about <laughs> Twilight Breaking Dawn, Rain Dawn Part 2? I would love... I was told... I would love spoilers. a lot of heads get cut off. Here's the thing. <laughs> Legit. I was told... Yeah, and, I, it do, and it doesn't happen in the book. Yeah, here's Which the thing. Which is crazy. I was told a bunch of... Sh- you know, it starts off crappy or whatever, or all bullshitty... Or not bullshitty, but just... Whatever. Love and gaze and... No. Like, just... Love and gaze. Sparkles. <laughs> sparkles. Yeah, sparkles and stuff like that. And, like... But then, Lame like, werewolves that aren't actually werewolves. They're just fucking That's wolves. not werewolves. That's, <laughs> don't even... Don't even call them that. <laughs> we get so mad when we do that podcast. <laughs> <laughs> when Kelly's on the werewolf podcast, he will be very mad. Um, so, yeah. Oh, they, they, there's... All this crap goes down. And there's a character in the in the movie that, like... If she touches you, she can project into you, like, a future. Like, what happens if, like, certain events happen. Which is awesome that all the vampires who already have powers also, each one has, like, an X-Men power, too. Yeah, pretty much. Because <laughs> uh, that's how vampires work. Yeah. Um, so, Sparkly vampires. Sparkly vampires. So, this girl and the the two, uh, Edward and whatever her name is, Bella, or whatever her name is, they, they, they want their... 
They have a child, but since the child's a half breed, she can never grow up. Mm-hmm. So, but they want. Sounds really racist when you say half. I should say. Half-breed. <laughs> <laughs> but, that just did, that had a bad ring to it. Yeah, that was very Scott Snyder. Like, um, <laughs> half breed. I'm gonna treat you like a half breed. Like, ugh. Um, so the, like the vampire order wants to kill her because if she ha- if she's a baby and she like has like a tantrum, she could like destroy a town hmm. because she's that powerful. Yeah. Apparently. So they want to kill her. They're like, we don't want any of that. And so the girl with the powers and that is like, I'll show you what happens if the. If uh, you know you kill that baby kind of thing, or if you start this war, and she goes to touch it. The guy's like, "Don't touch me!" And then he cuts off Edward's dad's head. <laughs> 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 and uh, yeah, and then so it's a bunch of people getting their heads cut off apparently. And then there's this big gigantic war between wolves and vampires and other vampires. And Edward and Bella eventually, the guy that who's kind of in charge of the, trying to kill the baby, they rip his head off. Is it Michael Sheen? I don't know what his name is. I, I think Michael Sheen gets uh, loses his noggin at some point. Hmm. When he gets his head ripped off, it goes back to the scene where he was talking to them in the first place and then decides not to kill the baby because it was all a work. Oh, yeah, I remember The girl that. showed yeah. him. So she touched him. She and touched him and, him and showed him. Yeah. Fuck that. Yeah. But then later, they, they do lose a bunch of heads for real. No, they live happily ever after. Oh, n- That's no, what I was told. No, I, I like because I, no, there is like a legit battle scene oh, at there? the end, yeah. Okay. Where some heads do like, and they like just slash some like major characters, and it's, apparently it's pretty. There's some pretty shocking stuff. It sound it sounded like uh, a lot of part two is like sort of a thank you to the guys who watched all of the ones with their girlfriends because there's actually some okay stuff in it. Yeah. And, well, and, luckily- and also it sounded like splitting. Splitting up, breaking down into parts one and two was the most bullshit as they could have handled, like, part one in about ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> part one was essentially setting up for part two. Yeah. It was a pre-movie. Mm. Which, yes. is, which, of course, is a movie where you leak a bunch of pre-com. <laughs> okay. Gross. Well, I hope you enjoyed I, our brief talk of uh, Twilight Breaking Dawn part two. Bonus. <laughs> because it will never happen again. <laughs> and none of us have seen it. Oh. Yeah. If they weren't like, so bad, I'd, I'd probably give them a try because it's monsters. I like yeah, monsters. but it's monsters designed for tweens. Yeah. Just like yeah. Harry Potter, I should realistically like because like oh, it's like Wizards. magic and evil things Dragons. and but like no, it's too gay for me. I actually saw the I've only seen one that one that I saw with Kelsey and Darren and all of them. It has I don't remember which one. One of the earlier ones. Yeah, it was one where like the first fifteen minutes was three D. <laughs> Mm. And that I, I don't remember much about that, but then I I got I saw the the very last one, part two one or whatever at uh, the drive, and actually no, it wasn't bad. Yeah, people have told me that I'd probably like the like the Later last ones, couple ones yeah. because they're adults and like more stuff happens, but I I just don't want to get involved in it at all. I've I've seen them all, but part two of the last one, and I like them all. So well, Scott, sometimes I question your judgment. So when always why. Like, oh, no, we still haven't seen the other one. Uh, Harry, Bo- Harry Potter and the Woman in Black. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh, I've seen it. Oh, I wish I hadn't. The sequel. <laughs> I wish I hadn't. I heard it was bad. It's fucking horrible. Yeah. Um, I don't know that I have any other movies I've watched I need to talk about. Oh, I've, no, I've, there is one that I just recently watched that I uh, I have mixed feelings on. Okay. Uh, I watched The Amazing Spider-Man. That one I had kind of mixed feelings on, too. There were parts I liked, yeah. and there were parts I didn't like. Yeah, uh, I, li- I like Lizard Guy. I can leave I the like rest. The, I like the Lizard as being the bad guy. Me, yeah. too. I think that was one of the things that I liked, is the fact that um, you know, he temporarily became a bad guy and went like insane, but then after they like put the whatever the antidote antidote in that he went back to being like which I believe like was, a good guy which like, I believe was chamomile tea was it chamomile tea yeah chamomile tea it, cures it, it, it calms you it, cu- it cures uh, monster monsterism it makes you very zen <laughs> yeah <Monsteritis. laughs> no that's the fear of monster yeah. yes <laughs> um, but I did I did like the fact that they they made him go back to the sane like yes. good guy that he was um, there are f- things I didn't I, I, I don't know if it's because I've watched so many movies that now I notice stupid bullshitty things because, uh, like, a million inconsistencies with his powers. Oh, yeah. Like, 
one second he's typing and his fingers get stuck and the keys get stuck to his fingers, but then the next second he's writing in a book and like flipping pages and like moving the pen. And like, we're all good. And nothing. Like, <laughs> yeah. there's just so many inconsistencies. I will say, I did like um, his actual mannerisms as Spider-Man, Spider-Man were way better than Tobey Maguire's. Like, uh, maybe it was because the suit was, like, suction tight to him, and he... I don't know. But he, I just thought that he was very... He was much or more, maybe it's because Tobey Maguire is stupid. And he's, like, five <laughs> foot one. Um, but he was, like... You know, I, I just, like... He, he, he seemed very comical in his mannerisms. Yeah. Like, he moved very well, and it was... Uh, I thought it was a pretty funny movie. I laughed at parts. And, uh... And Emma Stone is a total babe as a blonde. Uh, yeah. I will say that I wasn't. I did not like the interaction between her and Andrew Garfield. I didn't. Kind of like that because it's that whole thing now where it's like awkward romance is kind of the thing yeah. now. Like oh, uh, hipster like, nerdy yeah, love. I, yeah, I can't stand that. Yeah, that's so. what everything's all about. Um, and then I like at the very end they made a poor decision by they set up the bad guy for the next film. Uh, which is, which is yeah, Electro, the Joker. But, oh, yeah, Electro. But, <laughs> but before they they had it, so um, uh, Kurt Connors is that his name? Yeah, yeah. He's in the insane asylum or the insane the prison. Ar- the Arkham that is not Arkham. The, yeah, yeah, the the Marvel Arkham. Marvel Arkham. Um, and he's sort of uh, delusional still. And then a, a, a figure appears out of the corner of the room and is essentially telling him he's going to go after Spider-Man and he's telling him not not to. Clearly a older white, white guy. Man. And for the second movie, they have cast an actor to play Electro and it is Jamie Foxx. Yeah. So a little bit of discrepancy there, but I, I'm sure no, they didn't they didn't realize like, hey, let's get Jamie Foxx to play Electro because much like when Donald Glover was trying to be Spider-Man, yeah. people were like, no man, Electro's white. He can't be black. Like, I don't want to see a white shaft. Which, when you think about it, is wrong because who wouldn't want to see a white shaft? Well, it's like Donald Glover has said on Twitter that he wants Michael Sarah to play, play shaft. Yeah. And I would kill to see yeah, that cause movie. Because someone like in an argument against Donald Glover being Spider-Man, says, you can't have Spider-Man be black, that's like having Sh- Michael Sarah play Shaft. And Donald Glover's like, yeah, Michael Sarah playing Shaft would be fucking amazing. Yeah, I want to see that move. Yeah. Don- Donald Glover and Michael Sarah need to collaborate and do Shaft Sp- meets Spider-Man. White Shaft meets Black Spider-Man <laughs> and they need to hook up. That's a movie. That is a movie. <laughs> Has Donald Glover done been in a movie? The only movie he's been in is the Muppet movie and he's only oh, yeah. in it for like five minutes. One of, yeah. He's like an exec, like a junior executive or That's something. That's right. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, he'll, he'll certainly be in more as time goes on. Oh yeah, on. for sure. Um, and like for me, uh, I, I'd never read, I, I the only comic books I've ever read were the X-Men comic books once they introduced Bishop. So that's like late 90s. Bishop okay. is the black dude who could time travel, yeah. or King back, oh, okay. t- yeah. time traveled, whatever. Uh, so not reading the Spider-Man comic books, I'm not like super like, hey, like that's, this has to be. That's this. not how it goes. Yeah, I don't care. But <laughs> from watching like the, cartoon. the cartoons as a kid, I do understand. I think I think Spider-Man and Batman are the two that I understand the most backstory and everything about. Um, I want shocker. What I've admit, man. What I thought. <laughs> what I thought was kind of dumb was, um, like, when he falls through the roof of the building and he lands in the wrestling ring and he sees the, the poster for the Lucha Libre ring thing and then that's where he gets the idea to, like, hey, I should wear a mask and, like, that... I thought that was kind of dumb. Like, they didn't... Mm-hmm. If you're not going to go with wrestling like they did in the first one... Yeah. Like, then you don't really need, like... Bone saw is ready. Yeah. <laughs> um... How come Macho Man wasn't in this one? He's dead. Scott, uh, why must you bring up things that hurt me? I'm sorry. Do you not remember when we went to a wrestling pay-per-view and my my uh, poster got on the pay-per-view? It, the most meticulously made poster I have ever seen. Like, that, that was the... I still have it. That was the Sistine Chapel of things you hold up at a wrestling show. Every... every le- my, my sign was... Uh, Thank you, Macho Man, for 25 years of memories. And sign, sign, Drew, trademark. Like it, it was a busy sign. Yes. <laughs> but the 
Macho Man down the middle, every letter was a different gear, gear that he had worn from the beginning of his career to the roided up end of his career, <laughs> uh, all the way across. Which I was... from the from the roided up beginning of his career <laughs> to the roided, roided up, up end, end of his career. career. I was very proud of it. I still have it rolled up. It's in, good somewhere. Yeah, uh, it, well, I was I, definitely. I say it with no trace of irony. It's, a, it's we, an we awesome. We were on sign. the uh, over the limit pay per view right at the beginning. Yep. You can even read it from uh, where the camera is. Once again, go, go, go turn on WWE Over the Limit 2001. Look for the sign and then... 2001? Yeah, 2001 or 2011. It starts with the two ends and a one. People know what I'm talking about. Do they? I don't know. Um, and then look for our sign and then turn it off because it's a bad show. Yeah, there was, uh, there was not a lot going on in that. That was, when, uh, that was when Punk started doing his very horrible elbow drop. Yes. Uh, it was a very, very... It was what... It was Big Show and Kane versus Mason Ryan and Punk. Something for the tag titles. Baffling like that. Yeah, and uh, he definitely does. That was when he begins to do his absolutely horrible elbow drop that he never really got any better at. Ah, uh, he no, he has still not got any better at it. Yeah, no. that's too bad. Uh, yeah, there was also Punk or uh, sorry Orton and Christian that only had a good finish. No, he was good overall. I guess. And and that's. That means something coming from me, because I fucking hate Randy Orton. So if I say a match that was good, it it must have been awesome. Uh, and then there was... Uh... Danielson in the dark match. Yes, against Drew McIntyre. that was the best match on the card. It wasn't even on the show. Um, and then there was... Uh... Ray and Truth? Was it Ray and Truth? Yeah, it was like six minutes. They didn't do much. The mysterious truth. I, I don't really truth. remember that, but I, I'm sure. Uh, and and the, the main was unacceptable. The main was garbage. Like, uh, it you wa- went to a pay per view in 2011. I know. <laughs> what did you but think was gonna happen? Here's the thing: is that it was it was supposed to be Miz versus Cena in an I Quit, and who's the general manager? How was that going to be? A- Turn on. Them. I don't know. Well, I think we went for the rest of the card. Yeah. But um, no, no, it wasn't the general manager. It was it was uh, Miz came out and said because this is I quit. Nobody ever said I couldn't have another person. So he there's had. No dis- there's no disqualification. Yeah. So in an so quit. it was him and Alex Riley versus C- Cena. So they beat the fuck it out was of just Cena. Them torture porn. Yeah, like Cena for they, twenty minutes. They legitimately just beat the shit out of him until the very end when Cena throws. Um, Oh, no, well, no, sorry. They, they beat the shit out of him, and then they... Were, I'm sitting there with Scott, and they go, Oh, man, like, what if they totally fucking do the Mick Foley rock where they've pre-recorded oh, yeah. him saying, I quit, and, uh, and then they break open the, the barricade, they stuff Cena in the barricade, and then, you, like, you just hear, like, I quit, and then I look at Scott, and I'm like, yeah. no, they did not just fucking do that. Yeah. And then it turns out that he had a cell phone. Yeah, they, I'll did, show they, they, they did it phone. as a false finish instead of the real finish. Yeah, and so anyways, um, then, essentially, they just, then Cena goes, like, hulks up, and... Beats the shit out of Alex Riley. Yeah. Fights the Miz up to the top of the ramp. M- M- the, no, he does not fight Miz. He chases. Oh, sorry, he chases Miz. Miz, to the Miz top runs of the away ramp. like a faggot, even though he's been killing him Starts, for twenty minutes. Is he whipping with a belt? I don't think he does anything. He, here's how I remember it, even <laughs> though I'm exaggerating and I'm wrong. Yeah. The way I remember it is torture porn on Cena for twenty minutes. Uh, someone tells him it's seven forty-five and time to take it home. Uh, he throws Alex Riley. He, just, he, th- he throws him away. He puts him in a garbage can. <laughs> Chases the Miz up the ramp. The Miz trips. Cena puts him in an SDF. Miz taps out before the hold is fully. Yeah, applied. Miz could not have given up any <laughs> faster than he did. Like it was already over. Yeah. Oh, it was bad. Let's not talk about that anymore. Talk no, about, I don't know why about... we even talked about it to begin with. <laughs> let's talk about movies. Uh, um, oh, you see anything? Ask Ask me how I liked uh, Skyfall. Ask me how I liked the first half of Skyfall. Hey, Kelly, you see anything? Hey, I have seen two movies. Play into my bit. What'd you, see? What'd you see, Cal? Oh, you're killing me! I saw Skyfall and Lincoln. And? Skyfall was... Skyfail, am I right? Huh? Who's with me? Look, if you're not going to play into my bed, I'm just going to yell over other people talking. So, uh, feel free to go on my Facebook and uh, vote for Les Scott, uh, and we'll see what we can do to get him off the podcast. <laughs> um, Skyfall was fine, but I don't think it was... By anywhere, by any means, the best Bond. I just do not think. Moonraker. 
Moon no, I, I mean for like, like Daniel Craig Bonds. Right. Like Casino Royale was way better. What's that? Oh, sorry. I was showing uh, Scott the Pulp. splash page for uh, Sid and Macabre and what what Nick had done for it. Nice. <laughs> Stephen King. But then I tried to find the video of Stephen King throwing out the first pitch at a baseball game because it is goddamn <laughs> yeah. pathetic. Yeah. But I couldn't find it. Uh, Sorry, yeah. continue. What do, you know, what do you know? A science fiction writer with a bad throwing arm. <laughs> horror. Yeah. What? It was yeah. horror, you son of a bitch. Oh, what the fuck ever. <laughs> well, he also writes non-horror movies. I do like... Did you guys talk about... Um... Pet Cemetery and how the only reason we watched it <laughs> well, it was because of Herman Monster. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we did not actually, but we, we briefly mentioned it. But anyways, uh, we're getting off yeah. topic here. So Sky, yeah, it was fine, I guess. I mean, I, I everybody hyped it up so much that when I saw it, it was, was pretty like, hyped. I was like, this isn't really as good as I think people made it out to be. Um, I didn't, whatever. It was fine. Um, I've never been the biggest Bond guy, so I mean, it was fine. Uh, Lincoln was really good. Uh, yeah, Daniel D. Lewis will probably win. Um, I still haven't seen Hitchcock Because he was so. in a movie. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But we proved that he doesn't win every time. He's no, true. not every time. He yeah. only, he's only... Uh, you just, it's just a false misconception that he wins every time. Yeah. I will say that even if you're not into the seeing the movie for, like, the story or... You know, history. History and stuff like that, go see it for James Spader. Because <laughs> <laughs> he is fucking great in that movie. Kelly, we'll play, now that you've seen it, we'll play this game. What do you think his acting weight is? <laughs> oh, man. So, her, oh, first was, have you seen Stargate? Yes. What do you think his acting weight was in Stargate? Oh, it's been a while since. Like, 175, 180? Yeah, so, I guess okay, what's his, he was yeah. around the What's his time. acting yeah. weight now? Oh, it's gotta be at least, like, 230, 240. <laughs> he is a heavy set man. Yeah. He's great. But it was great. Every time he was in a scene, like, crazy fiddle music stuff. Yeah. <laughs> how, about, how about him running? Running. Oh, like he, and he got... Running. Uh, not for uh, very long. <laughs> so sweaty and just... Oh, it was so good. Yeah. Him, yeah. I could I could watch just him and Tommy Lee Jones just do funny things in, yeah. in, in the context of like Tommy Lee had some ridiculous lines in that. Yeah, yeah he had some great stuff. Okay, fine, Scott. What did you think of Skyfall? What did I think of the first half? What did you think of the first half of Skyfall? It was pretty good. What did you, what did you think of the last half of Skyfall? I don't know. You walked out? No. You fell asleep? I have tried to see this fucking movie twice. Mm-hmm. The first time, I went in its third week. It's been out for a while. Yeah. I go there at 6... Eh, 6.30, 6.45. The 7 o'clock, the 7.30, and the 10.30 are all sold out. So that's the day we ended up seeing Lincoln. We try again... Last week, in its fifth week, sixth week, yeah, um, we get in fine this time. Uh, see the first half, and then the fucking film shits out. And isn't the reason that we're doing digital video now is so we don't have to fuck around with film Absolutely. fucking up? Absolutely. Well, that didn't work because just like the computer that was playing it crashed basically, hmm. and they couldn't fix it. Did you get a free movie out of it? I got two free movies out of okay, it. Okay, because I was going to say, giving you a free movie when your movie fucks up is not, means nothing. Yeah. Because now you're just getting back the movie you've yes, already still paid out for. out a bunch of time. They're, they're not giving you anything. No, you have to because two. Because, Kelly, what movie? You and I went and saw Pirates, didn't we? No, it was uh, Valkyrie. Valkyrie. And the first, the like, snow, what? The snow knocked out all yeah. the... Yeah, well, there was that. But no, there was a movie that you and I went to, and the first, like, 20 minutes, there was no audio. I swear, it was the Pirate. It was uh, Pirates 3... Okay. Because it was when they had the big, the big moment where Johnny Depp Pirates and, ba- Band of Misfits, Band of Misfits, where Johnny Depp and um, Pirates Triple X is what it means, three X, oh, three okay. X's, <laughs> um, where yeah, Johnny Depp and Stellan Skarsgård are having that big conversation, Scars. and he finds out that he's uh, that he's Orlando Bloom's dad, and and was it, was it then? yeah, and there was that whole scene, and the audio cut out as soon as that scene started, so you did not know anything that happened in that scene. So then eventually later in the movie, you're like. Oh, that's what that scene was for. Maybe it wasn't you then, but that definitely I, happened to me. Because I know I went, went and saw Pirates with a bunch of people. So. Yeah. I but know, I know that it, it, was it has happened to you and you and I a couple times where we've gotten I know the movie fucked sure. up and we had to get free movie. I remember it's just been happening a lot, actually. Mm-hmm. Just about almost every movie I see now at a theater, something's wrong with it. I know it's a lot of times that when the movie starts that it's not... Um, it's Dark. not... Well, no, it's not that. It's just that it's not... Framed? It's not framed properly. Yeah. yeah. That it's, like, dropped down, like... Yeah. four or five inches or whatever it is yeah. so that you like the bottom's off screen and then eventually they like flip they it up it, yeah. or like sometimes mm-hmm. I'll go and the, the image is flipped yeah. so it's upside down or 
uh, or like so, like wrong side over, or then we went uh, to Wreck It Ralph, and like the audio was like five minutes behind. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Well, it was only for the, for the previews, previews and commercials, but oh, okay. still, like, yeah. you're sitting yeah. there thinking, like, oh, are they gonna fix this? Are they gonna fix this? Oh, they're not yeah. gonna fix this. <laughs> and then they finally do, but. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's happened. I think that's I know. Just I feel like every time I'm gonna. Probably for like the last couple months, every time I go see a movie, there's something going on in the theater that's wrong. Like, either the lights won't shut off, mm-hmm. the sound's off, yeah, the, the the image is too low or too high. There's something going on. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, Do you know that Skyfall is now the highest grossing Sony Pictures release of all time? Oh, wow, really? Yeah. yeah it's doing pretty damn well. Uh, but it's it's only number 22 of all time. That's still okay. But that's still pretty high, right? I'd like, I'd like to be number 22 of all time. Whoa, there's uh, an interesting decision. I, I just quickly brought it up here on, I guess I'll move this on, on Wikipedia, because uh, Wikipedia doesn't lie. Um, fucking Ice Age Continental Drift is 29th. Wow. I do not know a single person who saw heard, that movie. I heard nothing so. about it. Yeah, yeah, like, I didn't know a single thing about it. Uh, Dark Knight Rises is number 7. Sure. And Finding Nemo moved out to 21 because they re-released it in 3D. Oh, right. Uh, and the thing is, any big movie now, like, pretty much makes the top 50 because things cost more. Well, and, and the thing is, uh, everything up to the top 50, because it ha- only has the top is top 50 here, um, nothing below, the lowest on top, number 50, which is up, made $731 million. Yeah. So you have to like anything on the top five, fifty is over seven hundred thousand, seven hundred million. Hey, yeah. completely depressing movie. <laughs> it is very depressing. The whole movie's like a fuck you. <laughs> I feel so bad for those balloons. What happened to those balloons at the end? I don't know. Is this house still on that fucking cliff? Don't look at me. I've never seen a Pixar movie. Oh, that's right. Yeah. The monster. I still can't believe <laughs> you haven't seen it's... one. It's not out of, like, malintent. It just hasn't happened. I... Uh, I don't know why. I just like to play statistics and games. Kelly. What? Number one movie at the box office the year you were born was... Fatal Attraction. Hmm. All about me. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, number one movie at the box office the year you were born. Uh, I was going to say Amadeus, but that was the next Gone year. with the wind. <laughs> <laughs> Not that old. <laughs> How old are you, 41? Yes. What was number one in <laughs> 1971? <laughs> I was going to say, you're going to date yourself? Yeah. Um. What, what, what was number one in 83? I can't think off the top of my head. It's a movie I... Meatballs. I oh, was, was there... It's a movie I hate. Oh, 83 was Return of the Jedi? Return of the Jedi. Yeah. Number one at the box office, 1979. Moonraker. Moonraker. <laughs> 210 million. Wow. For a Bond movie in space. Awesome. Speaking of Bond songs, uh, Skyfall song sucks. Well, you know why it sucks? Because it's sung by Total Con. She has some okay songs. No, she does not. Right as Rain is a good song. She might honestly. Right as Rain off Adele 19. Is she a good song. honestly might sing the majority of the most annoying songs in the last five years. Rolling in the Deep is awful. Every song is awful. There's like one or two good songs on Adele 19. So, Scott, 20, 21 I, uh, doesn't have anything good. when did your but, vagina come in? Uh, Thursday. <laughs> but, yeah, Skyfall is a horrible fucking Yeah, it really song. is. But, I mean, there have been some and they did that bad... And they did that cheap out thing where, like, they incorporate the Bond theme into yeah. the song, yeah. and they're like, ah, oh, hey. yeah, assholes. Only the most prestige people do it. Like, ah uh-huh. Like Paul McCartney <laughs> and ah uh-huh. uh-huh. <laughs> Who is the, who, Madonna? Yeah. Who did the ones in the 90s? There was a bad, wasn't there a bad one in the 90s? Uh, Hootie and the Blowfish. Really? Uh, right. Toad the Wet Sprocket. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Gin Blossoms. <laughs> Gin Blossoms. Uh, R.E.M.? <laughs> oh, hey. fuck. I was trying for another stupid 90s pool. Who sang f- uh, Harvey Danger is who I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> everybody, everybody, everybody's trying to get me. Yeah. You never met and, me. You know, you know everybody, 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 trying to get Bond. <laughs> trying to get Bond. <laughs> yeah, you know that one. <laughs> <laughs> I made myself laugh. Oh <laughs> Harvey my. Danger singing a Bond theme. <laughs> so stupid. 
Oh, here, here we go. Okay, so you got Adele for Skyfall, uh, Jack White and Alicia Keys for uh, Quantum Solace, Chris Cornell for Casino Royale, which I actually really like that song. Yeah, that one's good. Uh, Madonna for Die Another Day. Blech. Garbage for The World Is Not Enough. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Cheryl Crow for Tomorrow Never Dies. Ugh. Weird. Uh, Tina Turner for Goldeneye. Yeah. Okay. Gladys Knight for License to Kill. Really? Okay. Aha uh-huh for The Living Daylight. <laughs> Oh, sorry, that's the name of the song, sorry. Uh, for A View to the Kill. Yeah. No. No, the Living Daylights was a... No, oh, I get it, okay. Yeah. Uh, Duran Duran for A View to Kill. Right. <laughs> uh, Rita Coolidge for Octopussy. His name is Bond and <laughs> through the side. She- Sheena Easton for For Your Eyes Only. Uh, Sheena, Sheena Easton? Sheena Easton. Shirley My Bassey for is... Moonraker. <laughs> Carly Simon, uh... Somebody named Lulu for The Man with the Golden Gun. Yeah. Uh, Paul McCartney and Wings. Uh, Tom Jones for Thunderball. <laughs> Which is pretty pretty awesome. It's not unusual to be loved by Thunderball. <laughs> Thunderball. <laughs> what a name. He has to say that. Thunderball? <laughs> it's Thunderball! <laughs> Paul Hammer is in that movie. <laughs> that was Rollerball, Kelly. Come on. Come on. Son this is Rollerball! <laughs> Son of a bitch, that movie sucks. Have LL Cool J and John Renault. John Renault, yeah. What? What a cast. Kevin, uh, Chris Klein. Rebecca Romaine Stamos. Hmm. Do like, is it just Rebecca Romaine, fat kid from Stand By Me? Jerry O'Connell. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, what else? So, yeah. So, I tried to say Skyfall. That didn't work. Seen Lincoln? We talked about Lincoln. Oh, saw Life of Pi. Oh yeah, that's what I. You saw it too. I liked it. We were we saw it separately but equally. <laughs> yeah, it was good. The um, uh, actually, I'll leave first. I was just gonna say you have to get past some, uh, somewhat bad acting and writing in the beginning until the movie gets into gear, and then I thought it was really good after that. I didn't. Th- I didn't. Uh, well, I, I've, I've heard, this is the second time I've heard people be like, uh, the action in the beginning sucked. I don't know if it so much sucked as it was just like... I think it's I think it's more the writing than the acting. Probably. But I didn't yeah, I didn't think the acting, like, the acting wasn't an Oscar quality in the beginning, but I mean, I didn't think it was... Yeah. I didn't think it was like anything horrible or like you couldn't sit through. Mm-hmm. Um, it's definitely, you have to... Yeah, because the, the beginning is very long. It takes a while to sort of the story to get going. But yeah. That's kind of how it was in the the book. And I my, my main concern about it was like, uh, I wonder if people are going to like hate this movie because of all the religious aspect, aspects of it. When mm-hmm. really, well, that's the thing. Drew's, Drew's raising, raising his hand. His hand. <laughs> but that's the thing is like, none of it's really pushed on you. No. It's just like, this is like, because he's, he's Hindu, right? But, um... Although I thought it was funny, and again, Catholic and Muslim, and Catholic and Muslim, how he goes through all his different, and his and his dad is like the atheist, yeah. which is kind of yeah, kinda it's crazy. weird. Yeah, it's weird that the the older generation yeah. are the atheists. Yeah, and uh, but yeah, no, I was it was very good. I don't remember the part with the island being in the book, but I, I think it's not. I don't think it is, but I mean, it yeah. was fine. Although I was completely hated Pi at that point. Like, he's, there's a bunch of meerkats everywhere. Why would you not live yeah. there? <laughs> and, like... All Besides the, the fact that the island is trying to kill you. He, he, you. <laughs> he was on Lost? He was on Lost. Lodge. Were there a bunch of meerkats on Lost? I think so. Well, meerkats or polar bears? I can't remember. They, 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 in my mind, they just blur they together into one animal. <laughs> and, like, he goes to sleep and all these meerkats want to cuddle with him. He's like, get And he's pressuring, like, yeah, get off me, meerkats. Who's ever said, get off me, meerkats? Bunch you of weirdos, want, want that's who. You want to drape yourself in meerkats. <laughs> like a meerkat coat. <laughs> I like the idea of a meerkat coat. Yeah. That eat bugs off your hair. Yeah, while you're it's awesome. Walking around. It was good. Yeah, and it, it was, was, unlike, it was a visual masterpiece, as a lot of people are saying, but unlike the last visual masterpiece, Avatar, this movie actually was good. Yeah, <laughs> and wasn't just Fern Gully. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was definitely good. It it'll definitely be nominated for some oh, stuff, man. and probably some stuff in besides just the visual stuff. Visual, yeah. Um, I don't know if it'll be up for any acting stuff. The um, like the sixteen year old Pi was was good. Good. Yeah. He um, he could be. I don't know if he will. Is that Slumdog? No. Oh. 
Um, oh, some dog was too busy doing uh, Last Airbender two. Ugh. Um, really? No, I'm joking. <laughs> that will never happen. He was in one though. Um, yeah, but like it, it could be up for picture, best picture. Could be up for best director. Could could be for adapted screenplay. Yeah. Um, wouldn't be so, especially with with the ten best picture nominations now. I it probably actually will be. Yeah. Um, which I'm fine with because as yeah, yeah. I, I really liked it and it did. Almost make me cry, even though I don't have any emotions. Bring it! Yeah, well, you show me a show me a kitty almost dying, and you're you're gonna get me. <laughs> oh, spoilers! I said almost. I don't tell you if it does or doesn't. That's right. I'm not gonna see it probably anyways. I'll only see it if it actually gets nominated for best picture, because then I see them all. You have to see it, yeah. No, it's good. I don't, I don't know why you wouldn't want to see it. It was, it was definitely a good. Something I don't want to see it. I'm just I didn't have the I didn't have the desire to go out of my way to go to the theater to see it. Like. The Lincoln, I was like looking forward to seeing. Uh, this I've been looking Skyfall, forward to seeing. I was like looking forward to seeing, and like when I saw the preview for this, I was like, I don't know, that really need to be made into a movie, like. But that that's about any any movie that's any book that's made into a movie because that defeats the purpose of it being a book. <laughs> Why? Why does Kelly always bring up books on the podcast? <laughs> you you brought this up first, yeah. but to be fair, this we do have the spinoff. Kelly loves books. We need to do it. <laughs> it's just it's just a podcast where you read a book. <laughs> no talking, you just read. Yeah, it. read a book silently to yourself. Yeah, dead silence, and then every every now and then you get a quick. Oh, <clears throat> I get to cho- I get to choose the book though, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You can read any book you want. All right, episode one will be Redwall. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you wouldn't be excited to watch a movie that has a tiger in it named Richard Parker. <laughs> is that what the tiger's yes. name the is? The tiger has a name, and it is Richard Parker. <laughs> but he's Indian, so why wouldn't he name it like the tiger? Is an Indian Glurjeet. Yeah, but <laughs> tigers are from <laughs> India. They are, but this one wasn't. The hunter that found him, his name was Richard Parker, and the, and the tiger's t- name was Thirsty. Thirsty. <laughs> but they got the name switched up on the... On the, sh- on the shipping, yeah. so it was sent from Thirsty, Thirsty <laughs> to Richard Parker, and as Richard Parker. Yes. <laughs> That's silly. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. And oh, and the the one other thing, which I... The, actually, no, I'll give it a positive and a negative. There is one thing I was super glad... They didn't do, and then one thing I was upset they did do. The thing I was upset they did do was at the end the um, the the writer who's interviewing Adult Pie uh, for basically there's a scene for the uh, all the dumb people watching the movie, and the the writer after everything is said and you're basically Drew is raising his hand as one of the dumb people watching the movie. Oh, is this near the end? Right, right okay, at the end. Yeah, yeah. Um, when, um, when everything's been said and you don't need to say anything else, and then the fucking writer who's interviewing, he says, oh, so this is this, and this is this, explaining all the symbolism that was so much better left unsaid. Yeah. So that pissed me off. The thing I really liked that they didn't do was when they got into it and, and, and young, and 16 year old Pi is out on the ocean i was like please uh, and things are like really and uh, things are happening i'm like please do not cut back to adult pie and kill the momentum of this scene and they didn't they kept it on narration young young pie for a long long time and i was so glad they did because it would have fucked it up if they did they switch had back cut to back. adult pie or did they just do narration i'm pretty sure they did they did some some bits of narration which were fine but i'm like please do not like switch the picture back to adult pie in his house talking about this yeah. cuz you need to keep this momentum going and they did so good and but yeah definitely very good movie overall um have you seen anything else i don't think i have that's um, what i've seen as far as in the theaters i saw uh, seven psychopaths or whatever that you already talked about that did i last time we were talking about movies did I? Yep. All right, all right. I can't confirm or deny, so I'll defer to you. I confirm. Because I actually listened to that episode. I'm like, you assholes, I actually listened to our podcast. Not really. I was those. I've listened to two of 12. That's pretty good. Oh, man. I know a movie. Two movies I need to quickly talk about because I have to go to hockey in 15 minutes. Okay. But I still need to talk about them. <laughs> Number one, uh, I watched Little Monsters for the first time since I was probably like 10. Is that with Fred Savage? Fred Savage oh, and Howie Mandel. Mandel. Um, I cannot confirm nor deny this, but I am very certain that before filming this movie, Howie Mandel snorted ten bags of cocaine. Because he was pretty out of not only is he all over the fucking place, <laughs> he is so goddamn annoying. Because like, I I swear that like there must have been sitting there directing this, going like, 
That's not in the script. He's going off script again. <laughs> this isn't even... This isn't part of the movie. What is he doing? Okay, who is more out of their mind on a movie set? Howie Mandel, Little Monsters, Boss Root, and Here Comes the Boom. Yeah, but see, that's just Boss being Boss. <laughs> it is Boss being that Boss. That was Howie Mandel to be on fair, cocaine. He, boss was probably on coke, too. <laughs> there's, a, there's a good chance. He did a lot of it in Pride. Him and Steven Quattros. <laughs> Kelly's buddy Quattros. Yeah. Fight Professor. Fight, fight Professor. Um, <laughs> stats. Yeah, definitely uh, wish that I hadn't You're watched that movie again. Because I think that that movie ruined it for me from my childhood. Because of watching it and thinking of, like, fuck Howie Mandel is annoying. Oh, yeah. And, he, like, just stupid. Um, so, wish how, I did, how does that guy always have work? Because people, always. America likes those stupid hidden camera shows, and that's all he's good at. What? He had like a he had a prime time game show, yeah. and uh, he's also a huge germaphobe. He has another and show. And, and, and and fucking judge on uh, America's right. Got Talent, which is new, funny because he doesn't have talent. And yeah, he has a new show. And Bobby's new, World? No, it's, like, Bob, it's another game show. Bobby's oh, World? great. Yeah, I uh, just constant work for Howie Mandel while people are starving. <laughs> I'm sure that Howie Mandel is a very nice person. Probably he puts off that he's a nice person, but at the same time you can't touch him. I was gonna say he's he might be nice. He's also an OCD creep though. Yeah, which is the case for most part. Uh, the other movie I watched that was ridiculously awesome and I loved every fucking minute of it <laughs> was a movie called Maximum Conviction. Starring Steven Seagal oh, and, so and cool. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Oh, you watch and everything it was wrestlers. fucking <laughs> awesome. Because there were so many hilarious one-liners, terrible fight scenes, to the point where, I, sh- I shit you not, Steven Seagal is so old and so fat now that... I was say, what does he do? They were doing such close cut scenes <laughs> that you couldn't see above his chest, so you just see like, kick, block, punch, boom. And then it would cut back to his head. So I swear to God, he had a body double doing all of his fighting for him. And I love the fact that Stone Cold's acting style is Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> like, he doesn't do anything that he wouldn't have done in, like, 1999 <laughs> in WWE. Like, that's exactly what he is. Like, it was fucking hilarious. And <laughs> yeah, he also swears so much in that movie. He, like, says motherfucker, like, a million times. He, like, refers to, like... Uh, there really was the only only thing missing from the Stone Cold Steve Austin character was him saying fuck a lot. Yeah. And now we can do it. And he's, like, there's one point where he says, like, a hilarious <laughs> line about how, uh, like, there's, like, this one b- a bad guy chick who she's kidnapped the good chick, and then he... But he doesn't know which one's which, so he goes to help her, and she ends up beating the shit out of him with, like, a piece of wood. She should kick her in the gut and give her a stun. And he, like, and he gets up and he says, like, some kind of line of, like, uh, like, talking to himself, like, um, uh, like, oh, I just got my, I was like, that's my kind of woman. And he's like, uh, something about, like, like, oh, like, my future wife. And then she gets killed, like, towards the end. Spoiler alert. Oh. And then he says to her, uh, Lord, maximum conviction. He, sa- he says to, like, his, his homeboy, um, like, oh, who killed my ex, my future ex-wife? And then they're like, oh, like, mm-hmm. and he's like, good, now I didn't have to hit her. And they're like, mm. <laughs> oh, so he's oh. being himself. Because Stone Cold's not opposed to hitting girls. Art he's, imitates he's, life. He's hit a million girls. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Deborah's proof of that. Oh, uh, Deborah. Now, has he hit a million girls or just hit Deborah? Probably or just hit Deborah. one girl a million Probably times. Probably just Deborah a million <laughs> times. But, uh, yeah, it was like, like, your perfect cheesy action movie. It was fucking great. Steven Seagal, yeah, but he is really fat. Yeah. And, like, Stone Cold, I love that he th- still throws his movie punches like his worker, worker punches. punches. Of course. They were exactly the same. But, uh, yeah, Steven Seagal did not do any of his own fight scenes. <laughs> like, he legitimately... The only times that they did were when he just had to do, like, a quick... Like, he would sneak up behind a guy and, like, he, he snapped a couple necks. But that, you don't actually have to do anything. You just go, and yeah. snap. But, like, you know, block, block, punch, kick. Like, you know, all close-ups, no face shots. No face. He definitely had a stand-in for him. Love it. Easy paycheck. Was it as good as Lockdown? No. Not even close. Good. Lockdown was pretty goddamn awesome. Lockdown sounds bananas. It's so good. Everyone says it sucks. They're crazy. Well, <laughs> yeah, because it didn't make a lot of money, and... But who gives a shit? It, it was awesome. It was great. The one thing I loved about Lockdown is... They did something that you never, ever, ever see in a movie. There is a part where um, the convicts in space have hostages, 
And so they send out a hostage negotiator up to talk to them. And when the hostage negotiator talks to them, he's all like, you know, so-and-so, like, let's do this. Usually, like, the bad guys are like, no, like, you know, we need more than that. Or, like, or they're just, they don't fucking care and they kill the hostage negotiators. Or yeah. Negotiator like that, right? The hostage negotiator talks to the main bad guy for, like, five minutes being like, man. Maybe, like, maybe not even five maybe minutes. Maybe not even five minutes. Just trying to, con- you know, convince him to give up a hostage. Like, you know, you gotta have the police. Da, 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 da. And what does the, the, the main bad guy do? The, or the hostage negotiator says, like, come on, man, you can trust me. So what does the bad guy do? Okay. <laughs> just, just, I, oh, I yeah. trust you. I trust you. And he gives him a hostage. Yeah. <laughs> Good negotiator. I know. I was like, this is the best negotiator I've ever seen in a movie. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty bonkers. Yeah. That's awesome. I love this. Yeah, no, I will we'll definitely have to see that at some point. I've got a, yeah, I've got a stack of movies to watch. Unfortunately, the current... You don't watch movies. You just make... Well, I like to have a mash up. I, I, I do, I do Maybe mash them up. You just like to make pirate, be a pirate, and I am a pirate. I am currently wearing an eye patch, but um, <laughs> the no, the five CDs currently, the five, the five discs currently in my five DVD changer are seasons one through five of Tim and Eric Awesome Show. So I have to get through those, and then I'll get to my stuff. Well, movies. that was the last appearance of Scott Henson on our <laughs> podcast <guys. laughs> because he brought up something that I hate more than anything. DVDs. <laughs> yes, watching DVDs. Well, more like five disc changer. That's what I hate most. I've been doing nothing but working and powering through regular show. Yeah, you've, you've probably seen way more than me at this point. Seen... A- after I talked to you about it like <laughs> what less show than a week ago. Days? Regular show. Have you, okay, have you seen like people like making references to, or even on TV, commercials for a show with a, like a Blue Jay and, and a, a, raccoon. a raccoon? No. Okay, it's... um. I mean, I won't get into it, but it's, it's, you know, like, you know that show Adventure Time? Yes. It's along those lines. It's along those lines, uh, but more geared towards adults. Yeah. There's a bit of swearing. Because, like, stuff like the characters are in their 20s. Yeah. Oh, okay. And they, there's some swearing and stuff going yeah. on. Yeah. And very, some innuendo and stuff. There's in a character <laughs> that I identify with. Identify with and want to be yeah. more than anything in the world. Is he a wolf? No. No, his amazingly. Is, his name is Muscle Man. <laughs> and he is a Fat, just like garbagey individual. He's got tits. He's got tits. <laughs> and is like, and his best friend is High Five Ghost. <laughs> it's, it's a ghost that has a hand on top of his head, and he high fives it all the time. Yeah, whenever Muscle Man says, says something dickish, and Muscle Man has a, a recurring joke, which is like, like, hey, you know who else is like? Now you can obviously tell where this joke is going, but they kind of swerve you. They go like, hey, you know who else is covered in cheese and like. <laughs> And has been bronze on the backside. My mom. <laughs> High five. <laughs> like, and so yeah, he, he says my mom. And he does that instead of your mom. And there, there are so many good episodes with him. There's an episode where he has to. There is four seasons of the show, and yeah. I've yeah. never heard of it. It's really good. Yeah, it's great. Man. I'm, I'm only, I just finished the, I finished the first season. I'm almost done the second season. But um, there's an episode where Muscle Man and High Five Ghost. <laughs> have to supervise Mordecai and Rigby. Uh, those, those are the two main characters. Those are the, the two main the characters. The Blue Jay and the Raccoon. And um, so they're driving around. They're goofing off just as much as they are. And they there's a taco, like a guy in a taco car. Mm-hmm. He's like, hey, high five ghost. The muscle man, like my favorite customer. He's like, what's going on? He's like, you guys want some tacos or something like that? He's like, yeah, but we got to supervise these losers. He's like, oh, man, I feel sorry for you. He's like, you know what else I feel sorry <laughs> for? My mom! And they all start going, oh! And the muscle man just starts shaking the, the taco <laughs> cart. Just, Ugh! he's so jacked up about it. And um, there's that one. He's got a girlfriend called Muscle Woman, although her name is Starla. And she looks almost identical to him. Also, his his dad is Muscle, muscle Dad. dad. And there's a, he likes to take off his... He loves to, like, do donuts in the golf cart that the park uses and, and like, take off his shirt and swirl it around. There's an episode where he thinks he's going bald and he goes to a roller disco with him to celebrate their anniversary, but he's, she's a, he's afraid she's going to see the bald spot, so to distract her from the bald spot, he takes off his shirt and constantly flexes man boobs <laughs> to keep her distracted from it. It's really good. And uh, some of the some of the enemies are so weird, like Gary Bobby Ferguson, who's a giant head. 
their boss is a gumball, gumball machine, machine. <laughs> named Benson. Man, Benson's gonna drop his balls when he says this. <laughs> it is a tremendous show. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just, ha- I was at a party where it happened to be on TV last week, and I was like, and Kelly and I had watched one, one episode, episode before that, and I was like, and then I saw, I ended up seeing like most of a couple of episodes at the party. I'm like, oh. The show's awesome. <laughs> so I told Kelly about it, and this was like, yeah, less than a week ago, and now Kelly has watched 3,000 episodes of it. Alright, we gotta go. Some of us have to go. Some of us so. have things to do. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna, until then, uh, Lyndon Ashby is a shithead. Is that a weird personal dick? He played, uh, freaking. Johnny Cage in uh, Mortal Kombat. <laughs> really? And his career has gone fucking nowhere. He was supposed to play in Mortal Kombat 3, which never happened. It's, <laughs> IMDb page says 2013. Yeah, of course. They've been saying, what, 20 or 19, yeah, 20 something for I don't know how long. Too bad that the world will end and they won't get to that far. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the guy from Alien vs. Predator Requiem, who is also in Quintuplets with Andy Richter, who apparently this past September killed his wife and himself. Was his wife? It was just some. Oh, sorry, he was banging. Killed his forty three year old girlfriend and himself. Is a shithead. Hmm. Claude Lemieux is a shithead. Because <laughs> I watched that clip where he nails Chris Draper into the woods. <laughs> <laughs>